Join us live tonight to dissect today's courtroom fireworks is attorney Bernard Alexander. Uh, Bernard, always good to have you uh, with us tonight. Let's start with the basics. The former president saying he is being treated unfairly. He says if this were any other defendant, he would be treated differently. If this were your defendant, would it even get this far? Because after all, this is a criminal defendant who not only attacked the special counsel, but his family. Well, Dell, thank you for uh, allowing me to be on with you. Um, this is special circumstances that he has essentially created. Uh, what the defense is arguing is that, one, because of the defendant, but also because he's a presidential candidate, he should get special treatment. And what they've done is they've melded those two, linked those two together, so that the only option that they hope to give the court is his political right to speak, his First Amendment uh, right, will basically take priority over all other things. Uh, the issue that the Court of Appeals has to deal with, like the uh, like the um, the uh, U.S. Uh, court judge, is to try and uh, maintain the integrity of the court, make sure that the individuals involved in terms of witnesses, in terms of the clerks, are able to function without the threat of harassment or, or something uh, occurring to them uh, as a result of the statements that would be made uh, by former President Trump. Mr. Alexander, as you know, the litmus test has always been you can yell but you can't yell fire in a crowded theater is this the political equivalent of that in other words he can say what he wants to say but he can't go around threatening all of the witnesses and the judge well that's one of the issues uh, so there's a history in this instance of of january 6th and we know that words can actually turn into action and so the issue here is whether those same words can be used to intimidate witnesses. Uh, the, the court actually had a discussion, though, about uh, those witnesses. We have a number of people that are essentially public figures. Those public figures, likely they can stand up for themselves. Uh, the uh, ex-vice president, um, the, um, the chief of staff. But the individuals inside the courthouse, those clerks, uh, people that have less power, there are less public figures, those are the people that the court has to protect in order to protect the process. In her original order, Judge Chutkin said that Trump still had the right to criticize the Justice Department as a whole, but specific attacks against the special counsel Jack Smith and other prosecutors involved, and the witnesses as well, would be barred. Why did she separate the two? And let me ask the question this way. Is Donald Trump winning the war of words when it comes to saying anything that he wants to say while all of us parse the language and the language of the law trying to figure out if he can say it? Well, the issue is trying to preserve the right of of having political speech. The political speech is broad and the trial court uh, confirmed that he could engage in political speech. He could say that this was trumped up, that this is all politically motivated. He can say things of that nature. It's the personal attacks that have the danger of uh, causing people to be uh, harassed or having um, them to not be safe. That's the issue. But that's my point. Attacks. What do you do? Um, what do you do when you're What do you do when you're dealing with a, a criminal defendant who really doesn't care, one way or the other, what anybody says that he can and cannot do? I mean, if anything has been proven over the last five years when it comes to Donald Trump is that he burst through norms, and this seems to be another one of those norms. Well, it is one of those norms, norms um, that he burst through. Uh, what can be done? I think the U.S. District Court judge has done that. She entered a gag order from the questions that were posed um, and the responses that were given. It seemed that the Court of Appeals is going to maintain the gag order, but the question is, what limitations does it place on the gag order? In other words, there's a certain amount that... that uh, ex-President uh, Trump should be able to say, but there are boundaries that should be placed to that. And I think that the that the trial court has already indicated that it's going to place those boundaries. And it seems as though the Court of Appeals is going to confirm that boundaries should be set and itemize what those should be. A lot of time was spent discussing the fact that Donald Trump is running for re-election. Judge Patricia Millett saying, quote, We've got to use a careful scalpel here and not step into really skewering the political arena. Is it really possible to limit what a candidate can and cannot say without doing just that? And I go back to my original question to you. If this was your defendant and a man not running for president, would he be locked up or gagged by now? Under most circumstances, uh, judges do not tolerate what 
what uh, former President Trump is doing. And so, yes, I would expect that the court would come down hard on anyone who did not have the, uh, the previous history of, uh, of former President Trump. And so he is getting some exceptional treatment. That being said, I, it does appear that the trial court, Judge Chutkin, is going out of her way to place limitations while at the same time not prevent him from being um, a uh, from from uh, doing what normal presidential candidates do and speak his mind. There's a difference between speaking your mind as to political issues and speaking your mind in a way that causes people to be subject to attack. And that's the issue that's being discussed at the Court of Appeal. Twofold question. Does it appear, first of all, the three-judge panel is going to allow the gag order to stand? And is there a fear factor involved in this? And, and that being said, everybody from the prosecutor on down, even Fonnie Willis in Georgia has to hire security just to get to and from their own cars. How much of a factor is the fear factor that people just don't want to put up with the fact that if they gag the former president of the United States, there's a good chance they're going to be threatened on social media? Well, I, I don't know that the issue is necessarily gagging him. I think the issue is him being able to say whatever he wants to say. It's that limitation that needs to be placed. Um, for people to react because he's gagged would be kind of counterproductive to, I think, what uh, the court is attempting to accomplish. What the court wants to do is to allow him to continue to be on the campaign trail and say things that are consistent with his being able to defend himself publicly and, and to uh, make whatever statements he wants to make in order to run for president. At the same time, he has to conform to the norms so that you can have a trial based on the merits and not people be uh, not have people be intimidated because of the threats that he will make or the consequences of, of his followers uh, taking it out on, on the people that he directs. But our 30 seconds left, are we fiddling while America's judicial system burns? And I, I point to the case of Abigail Shry. She is in Texas. She was arrested in August. Right now she's on trial for making racist, violent threats against Judge Tanya Chutkin. About those threats, Judge Brad Garcia saying today, we have a past pattern when the defendant speaks on the subject, threats follow. Why isn't the district court justified in, in taking a proactive measure? Well, I think the court is, and one of the justices uh, on the Court of Appeal actually specifically said, why should we wait until there's some adverse consequence? Shouldn't we be able to uh, anticipate that and take action based on that? The trial court, the U.S. District Judge, Judge Chutkin, took action to try and prevent something from occurring that would impair the ability of the court to go forward in terms of the prosecution. And so it appears that the Court of Appeal is on the path to confirming that the gag order is correct. but being careful about how it limits what uh, what things uh, former President Trump can and cannot say in terms of his uh, being what he does on, says on the on the uh, political trail. Brad, ten seconds left. Are you convinced that before all is said and done, someone will be hurt? I'm hopeful not. We always have to be optimistic, and I think that the the uh, trial court is doing everything it can to minimize that possibility. Bernard Alexander. Our trial attorney and expert, Bernard, as always, thanks for being with us. Thank you very much for having me.